Good morning and welcome to our webinar. Um, just before we get started, I want to cover a couple of housekeeping items. We do have many participants today. However, for privacy, we have removed your ability to see one another. Um, but if you have any questions, please direct them to our representatives who are available in the International Programs booth for a live private chat. You can find that, um, that booth in the main lobby. There's many uh, links that you can click within the main lobby that direct you directly to the live chat. So please direct any questions there. Um, to get started, once again, welcome to our International Student Admissions Process webinar. My name's Amanda Tambling, and I'm an admissions recruiter here with Northeastern University's College of Professional Studies. I'll be later joined with Kelsey Dennis, who is our international student advisor here at the university. Just to go through a few, item, a few items that we'll be covering today. Um, first, we're going to touch on the College of Professional Studies and who we are here. We'll touch on some of the various international student basics, such as some terminology that we'll use throughout the presentation. We'll cover which programs we have here at the College of Professional Studies that are I-20 compliant. We'll review the admissions process, when to apply, and then Kelsey will join us and she'll talk about the I-20 request process. We'll close out the event with a discussion about our student services, and then we'll direct um, all your questions to our live chat. So a little bit about the College of Professional Studies. Um, we are just one of nine colleges under the Northeastern umbrella. Um, we actually are ranked, as a fun fact, number seven in the world for a number of international students. Here at the College of Professional Studies, about 24% um, of our graduate and undergraduate students are international. So you will be um, surrounded by a very diverse population here. Um, at CPS specifically, we have over 11,000 students representing um, over 85 countries and an alumni base of 40,000. We have a, a few alumni chapters across the world as well. <clears throat> we offer over 60 undergraduate and graduate degree programs that are grounded in theory and applied in practice. And that's a term and a statement that you'll hear quite often at Northeastern because our programs are really dedicated um, to ensuring what the students are learning in class is what they can actually apply in practice and in industry. We do understand the needs of our current students and what I mean by that is we offer a lot of different flexible formats including online, on ground, or a blend of the two. And finally, something that we uh, hold near and dear to our hearts is that our faculty are industry leaders and academic scholars at the same time. So what we mean by that is that the College of Professional Studies, most of our faculty members are adjunct faculty members, which means they typically have a full-time job in industry and then work as a professor um, part-time, so they only have two or three classes that they teach. This is really great because they are able to bring in real-world experience and timely information into the classroom, which you otherwise might not get um, with mostly full-time faculty members. Moving along, I want to touch on some terminology that we will be using throughout the presentation and cover just some international student basics here. Um, first of all, what is an international student or who is an international student? Um, hopefully all of you are international students as you're joining us here today, but um, international students are applicants who are not a U.S. citizen or are not a U.S. permanent, legal permanent resident or a green card holder as some people may say. Um, we also will be using the terminology I-20 throughout the presentation, and this, this specifically is uh, a document issued by Northeastern University's International Student and Scholar Institute, or ISSI as we call for short because that is a mouthful, um, to students that show that they're fully accepted into a full-time program here at Northeastern University. An I-20 application is required to secure an I-20, and Kelsey, later in the presentation, will be going over the I-20 application process. And finally, what is an F-1 student visa? So this is the document that's issued by the U.S. government, which allows students to travel to the U.S. to study full-time. 
An I-20 is required to secure an F-1 student visa. So first you have to apply for an I-20 and then you'll be issued um, an F-1 student visa. Moving right along. So I want to review our I-20 compliant programs and what I-20 compliant programs are. Um, so in order to be I-20 compliant, international students must maintain full-time student status here at Northeastern. In I-20 compliant programs, you need to have enough courses scheduled on campus to ensure that the student will maintain full-time status while at Northeastern University. And we're going to review what I-20 compliant programs we have available to international students in the preceding slides. So to start off, um, we're going to talk about some of our bachelor's degrees that are I-20 compliant. Um, I'm just going to run through some of these. Uh, we have a biolog biological science, biotechnology, environmental studies, finance and accounting management, graphic design, health science, information technology, or often called IT, leadership, liberal arts with a business minor, management, operations technology, and political science. You'll see that the degree programs with an asterisk are also offered in an 18-month fast-track format. And this is specifically for students that have already completed an associate's degree or have equivalent credit, number of credits as a, an associate's degree. And once you have a completed an associate's degree or equivalent credit credits, you can apply for the 18-month fast-track format within finance and accounting management, information technology, um, and it looks like those are the only two available. Oh, and I apologize, and leadership. So I want to review some of the I-20 compliant master's degrees that we offer here at the College of Professional Studies. Um, we have corporate and organizational communication, digital media, global studies and international affairs, commerce and economic development, informatics, leadership, Nonprofit management, project management, and regulatory affairs for drugs, biologics, and medical devices. We also have a number of graduate certificates, which typically are about five classes, so it's an, it's a, an abbreviated degree. Um, great thing about our graduate certificates is that if you do complete a graduate certificate of ours, we will roll all of them into a master's degree if you choose to um, continue on and complete a full master's program. And I do want to remind everyone to direct all your questions to the live chat that is happening where we have admissions representatives um, available to answer your questions. You can find the live chat in the main lobby of the platform, of the online platform that you're in right now, and simply just click one of the banners that say live chat. So I want to review our undergraduate application process. It's pretty straightforward, but I think it is important to run through some of the specifics. Um, we do have an online application. This is simply a venue where we'll be able to capture some of your basic demographic information. Um, it takes about 15 to 20 minutes to fill out. It is free. Um, we do require transfer credit documentations, so your official uh, transcripts. Um, it can either be your official U.S. transcripts if you're studying here and if you studied here in the U.S. or your official foreign transcripts. If they are foreign transcripts. They must include an English translation. We encourage you to submit a course-by-course -course equivalent uh, um, evaluation of your diploma or transcripts as well. Um, let's see, we also, we, would, we, we do require official, an official GED and an official associate's degree showing degree conferral dates as well. If you, uh, if English is not your native language, we do require proof of English language proficiency and I'll cover the various examinations that we do offer and accept here at, the, at Northeastern University. A uh, great thing about our programs at the College of Professional Studies is we do not require ACT or SAT scores, which is standardized testing that most colleges uh, throughout the nation do require. If you're interested in our fast track programs, there are additional 
documentations that we do require, including a statement of purpose, which is an essay, a current resume, and potential prerequis prerequisite coursework that may be required for some of the classes. Our master's application is similar in some ways. Uh, we do require an online application. Again, it's a, a forum where we collect your demographic and basic information. We uh, ask for a personal statement, and this is 500 to 1,000 words, and uh, an original work, which really discusses what's led you up to deciding to take this master's program, what it is you want to get out of the master's program, and how you're going to apply it later in life. We then ask for a current resume, two letters of recommendation. Um, we, we would like to see letters of recommendation from um, direct managers or professors from your undergraduate experience that know you as a student. Um, then, we, then we require the undergraduate official transcripts as well. And again, this is an original copy that needs to be sent directly from your undergraduate institution to Northeastern. And we would require that one be translated to English, and we do uh, recommend that you do have your transcripts evaluated using CED service. Um, proof of Eng English language profici proficiency will be required for students that, um, that English is not their primary language. And we do not require standardized testing such as GRE or GMAT. Very similar for our graduate certificate applications. Um, we have all the same requirements as our master's application. The only thing that's different is that we do not require recommendations. So I want to talk a little bit about the various English language proficiency exams and requirements that we have here at Northeastern University's College of Professional Studies. Um, the first and probably the most popular exam is the TOEFL exam. We do require a score of a 79 um, for both our graduate and our undergraduate programs, with the exception of the Master's of Science in Regulatory Affairs for Drugs, Biologics, and Medical Devices, which requires a minimum score of an 85 and a writing portion of 22. We also accept the IELTS. And for both our graduate program and our undergraduate program, we look for a score of a 6.5. And in the graduate programs, with no band lower than a 6. We also accept the Pearson's exam, which is a new exam that we are accepting. Again, for our graduate and undergraduate degrees, we are looking for at least a 53 score um, or where they accept, with the exception of the Master's of Science in Regulatory Affairs for Drugs, Biologics, and Medical Devices, which we require at least a 57. We do offer an NU Global English exam. If you are here in the United States um, and you have completed an application with us, you are eligible to um, schedule an appointment with us and take our own exam here on campus. Um, that for undergraduate and, and graduate programs, we require at least a score of 100. I want to remind everyone to um, direct your questions to the live chat that's simultaneously happening, happening and you can access that through um, the lobby of the online, online portal, and you can click any of the signs that say um, chat live now or live chat now. All right, so Last slide before I transition to Kelsey, who will talk about our I-20 process. Before we do that, I want to just talk about some important dates um, as far as the application process goes. And if you take anything away from this presentation today, this will probably be the slide that I would say I'd like you to remember um, because it is important. Um, so we do have... Uh, four start terms a year, but since we have already passed our fall start term, I wanted to um, present to you the three start terms for the remaining academic year. Um, winter 2015, so that's a start date of January 5th. So that's a, a traditional start date in higher education typically. We do have a deadline if you are requesting an initial I-20 of October 27th. If you're transferring in, um, 
we require a deadline of December 1st. And again, Kelsey will go over what the difference is between an initial and a transfer in I-20. Our spring semester starts in April. And if you're an initial I-20 request, we require a, a February 2nd deadline for your application and a March 2nd application deadline if you're transferring in. And for our summer term, we um, have only two programs that we offer to our international students during that time frame. Um, that's our Master's of Science in Regulatory Affairs for Drugs, Biologics, and Medical Devices, and our Master's of Science in Global Studies and International Relations. Those are the only programs that meet F1 visa requirements for full study during for full time study during the summer term. Um, and again, that start term starts in July 6th with a deadline of May 4th for an initial I-20 and June 1st for a transfer in. I do just have a couple notes that are, are important. We do require all documentation for an academic acceptance as well as, well as immigration documents to be in our office by this deadline. It's a very hard and fast deadline. If you miss the deadline, you'll be deferred to the next available start quarter. So for example, if you are hoping to start in January and you don't have all your documentations in by the deadlines, we'll defer you to the spring term. After you submit all your documents, you'll receive an academic acceptance um, within five to seven business days. So I'm going to transition to my colleague, Kelsey Dennis, who is our international student advisor. And she's going to talk about the I-20 um, I-20 process. Thanks, Amanda. So my name is Kelsey. I work in the ISSI. And it's our office on campus that issues the I-20 documents. So once you've been accepted, you'll need to complete the I-20 request e-form. And you can do that first by creating your MyNEU account, and then you'll log into My ISSI, and that's a special database for students. And you'll need to do, use your MyNEU credentials to get into My ISSI. And then your enrollment coach will have sent you a link to the I-20 request form. And um, you could also find that link on the CPS or the ISSI websites. So before you start the e-form, you'll want to collect your documents. You're going to need to upload to the e-form the identity page of your passport, financial documentation that shows that you can pay for the first year of your program. And um, that must be dated within the last nine months or nine months before the start date of the program. And the do financial documentation must be in English. And um, the amount on the document should be listed in US dollars. If it's not listed in US dollars, you can upload a currency conversion. So that's fine. And then if you have government sponsorship, please also upload your government sponsorship letter that has your name, major, and the covered terms. So if students are already in the US, then you may be able to transfer your CVIS record from your previous school to Northeastern. So CVIS is the database that the US government uses to track F1 students in the US. So when you are issued an I-20, you have a CVIS record and your I-20 has your CVIS number on it. So if you are already in the US with an I-20, you can talk to your current school about transferring your CVIS record to Northeastern. And if you're eligible to do that, you can fill out the transfer in form and then you'll upload that to the Northeastern I-20 request e-form. Now, if you're in the US in a different visa status and you don't plan to change to F1, then you can also log on to the My, um, <clears throat> ISSI I-20 request form, and you're going to answer a series of questions. And if you indicate that you do not want to change to F1 status, then you can fill out the, um, the data form instead. And so that's also an e-form, and the link to the data form is right within the I-20 request e-form. So like I said, the I-20 request process is entirely online. 
So you would be uploading all of your documents to the eForm. So we recommend that you have them saved on your computer in advance. And they can either be in PDF or a JPEG. And you don't need to mail your original financial documents to Northeastern. So you can hold on to those for your visa appointment. So this is what the eForm looks like when you log into MyISSI. So you can just read through the instructions and answer the questions and upload all of the required documents. And then at the end of the eForm, you'll be able to indicate your preference for receiving the I-20. So you can indicate that you'd like to have it mailed to you, or you can pick it up if you're in the Boston area. And then once you've submitted the e-forms, you have to click submit at the bottom of the form. It will be routed to the CPS admissions office for review. And if everything looks all right, it will be sent to ISSI and we can create the I-20 for you. And it's about a two to three week process altogether. And then when the I-20 has been issued, you'll receive an email notification and the email will have your CVIS number in it. So um, you can get started on paying this, the $200 CVIS fee online to the US government and you can get started on the visa process as soon as you have that email. You'll receive an additional email with tracking information after that. So this is what the I-20 looks like. And so, um, you know, once you have that I-20 or even just the CVIS number, which is in the upper right corner of the I-20, you can pay the CVIS fee online and there's a special website for that. And then if you're a transfer student and your new I-20 from Northeastern has the same CVIS number as your previous I-20 from your other school, then that means you don't have to pay the CVIS fee again. And if you still have a valid F-1 visa, you won't need to renew it unless it's expired. So once you've paid the CVIS fee, then you can make your F-1 visa appointment at the embassy. And remember to bring your passport, your I-20, your CVIS fee receipt notice, the CPS acceptance letter and your original financial documents with you to the visa interview and then also when you enter the US. And I'd like to close out the rest of the presentation with some information on our student services. When you are accepted, and hopefully we'll see you here on campus, we do have a number of um, student services available to you. Um, we have, uh, again, our International Student Scholar Institute, our ISSI office, um, which Kelsey works for. We have housing assistance, financial aid, academic advising, our library, which is very um, high tech, our writing center, tutoring services, career services, which I'd like to know is number one in the nation, and a disabilities resource center. And those are just a few resources that we have available to you. Um, there are a number of others that um, will be really great resources for you as well. So I want to talk about two resources that you'll have here at Northeastern University as you start your application process. So that is our enrollment coaches. So what is an enrollment coach? So essentially an enrollment coach helps you through the application process and helps you choose which program is right for you. They explain the admissions process, including financial aid, um, and they help you register for your first classes and answer any questions you may have when you begin to, while beginning your first classes. If you'd like to know who your enrollment coach is, you can simply email cpsadmissions at neu.edu or call our number 877-668-7727 and notify us of what your program of interest is. And once you tell us your program of interest, we'll direct you to the right enrollment coach. So I want to talk a little bit about what the difference is between an enrollment coach and an academic advisor. So an enrollment coach, again, is really talking to you and helping you from your initial interest in CPS until you've confirmed your acceptance and um, you are enrolled in a program. You'll start working with your academic advisor once you are a CPS student and fully enrolled. So once you've started your classes here at the College of Professional Studies at Northeastern, you'll then start building a relationship with your academic advisor and we will notify you of who your advisor is in order for you to get in touch with them. 
So that concludes our presentation. If you would like to reach out to us for further information, please do so by using the email address and phone number listed below. Um, also, if you do have any pending questions, please direct them towards our um, live chat that is happening right now until 1030. We have several admissions representatives available to answer any and all of your questions regarding your application process and some of our programs. And you can access that in the lobby of the online platform you're currently in by clicking live chat now. There's a few, a few um, banners in the, in the lobby that you can click to access that. On behalf of both Kelsey and I, thank you so much for participating today. We hope that we answered all your questions and hope to help you on taking the next steps in your education. Thank you.